First of all, let's look at removing the cylinder head. The first operation consists of removing the valve timing components as per the recommended procedure. The rocker cover must then be removed, firstly by loosening all of the bolts by one quarter of a turn in the opposite direction to the tightening procedure. This operation must be carried out when the engine is cold and by observing the correct loosening sequence in order to avoid any risk of damage likely to lead to leakage after refitting. Once the bolts are removed, you can gain access to the camshafts. In all cases, it is essential to refer to the technical documentation specific to each engine type. The special instructions for removing the camshafts are as follows. Click on the indelible marker pen. Using an indelible marker pen, you must first mark the position of the camshafts and the position of the camshaft bearing caps. After marking, you must loosen the camshaft bearing cap bolts by one quarter of a turn. On certain engines, it is not necessary to remove the camshafts to remove the cylinder head. You must always refer to the technical documentation to find out about the special procedures for each engine type. The cylinder head must be removed when the engine is cold. Removing the cylinder head is first done by loosening the cylinder head bolts by one quarter of a turn in the opposite direction to tightening. The cylinder head bolts must be loosened by hand. All removed cylinder head bolts must be replaced if the length under the bolt head is outside of the tolerance. In all cases, you must refer to the technical documentation. Click on the mallet to remove the cylinder head. The cylinder head is removed by simply lifting it from the cylinder block. It may be necessary to use a plastic mallet to release it. Once the cylinder head is removed, you must place it on a suitable bench to avoid damaging it. Lastly, let's look at removing the valves. All of the components must be marked during the removal operation. Removal of the valves requires special tooling to compress the valve springs, to remove the seals and to separate the valves. You must take care not to damage the cylinder head face when removing the valves. In all cases, you must refer to the technical documentation to find out about the procedures for removing the valves. In this section, we covered the following points. Removal of the upper engine begins with removal of the valve timing components. The operation consists of removing the rocker cover. Removal of the camshafts is performed after the bearing caps have been marked. The cylinder head bolts must be loosened in the opposite direction to tightening. Removal of the valves requires special tooling to compress the valve springs, to remove the seals, and to separate the valves. Now let's look at the checks to be carried out on the cylinder head components. Any removed component must be carefully cleaned prior to inspection. You must first carry out the following checks relating to the cylinder head gasket. Measure the thickness of the cylinder head gasket at the point specified in the technical documentation. Check that there are no tears or large cracks. And lastly, check that there are no large deposits of carbon. The cylinder head conformity check is done via the following checks. Measurement of the flatness using a ruler and a set of feeler gauges. Measurement of the height using the recommended measuring devices. And lastly, a cylinder head test to check that there are no cracks using pressure equipment. Now let's look at checking the valves. You must first check that there are no signs of wear, overheating and seizure on the valve stem. You must then carry out the following dimensional measurements. The diameter of the valve stem or valve guide. As well as the lateral clearance using a dial gauge. The diameter of the valve head. The valve length 
The valve head angles. Now let's look at the wear value for the valve return springs. Click on the spring. You must measure the total length of the spring at rest using a vernier gauge, sliding caliper. Lastly, you must measure the spring wear using a spring setting tool and check that the value is within the recommended tolerance. Checking the sealing of the valve seats is done as follows. First, you must tip the fuel into the cavity where the valves are located. Then, check that there is no fuel in the area of the valve stems. Measurement of valve recess is performed using a special tool equipped with a dial gauge. You must check that the measurement obtained for each valve is within the recommended tolerance. The measurement must be taken over the valve head as close as possible to its shaft. Now let's look at the camshaft checks. First of all, you must check that there are no signs of wear, overheating and seizure relating to the cams and the bearings. Click on the camshaft. The first dimensional check is the measurement of the diameter of the bearings and the height of the cams using a micrometer. The second check consists of measuring the camshaft runout using the appropriate number of V's and a dial gauge fitted on its support. You must then measure the internal diameter of the camshaft bearings. Lastly, you must check the lateral clearance of the camshafts after having refitted them to the cylinder head. In this section, we covered the following points. Checking the cylinder head gasket involves checking the thickness of the cylinder head gasket and checking that there are no tears, cracks or large deposits of carbon. Checking the conformity of the cylinder head is done by measuring its surface flatness and height and by checking the results of the test. The valve dimensional checks involve first checking that there are no signs of wear, overheating or seizure. The valve spring wear value must be within the recommended tolerance. The measurement of valve recess is done over the valve head as close as possible to its shaft. The checks relating to the camshafts include a check for wear, measurement of the diameters of the rotating parts and the height and runout of the cams. Now let's take a look at removing the cylinder block components. The first operation consists of removing the accessories fitted to the engine, including the crankshaft pulley and the engine flywheel. This relates to removing the sump by slackening all the bolts in the opposite direction to the procedure used for tightening, then the front and rear crankshaft seal housings. The final operation prior to removing the crankshaft consists of removing the oil splash plate, then the oil pump. Now let's look at removing the crankshaft. The first stage consists of removing the connecting rod cap bolts and the connecting rod piston assemblies. Click on the indelible marker pen. First, you must mark the connecting rod caps then the crankshaft bearing caps using an indelible marker pen. After marking, you must remove the connecting rod piston assemblies, then the crankshaft bearing caps. And finally, the crankshaft. Once the crankshaft is removed, each crankshaft bearing shell must be marked because the class may vary depending on the bearing. In this section, we covered the following points. Removing the cylinder block components begins with the removal of the accessories, including the crankshaft pulley and the engine flywheel. To remove the crankshaft, the connecting rod cap bolts and the connecting rod piston assemblies must be removed.